Susie Homestead of the Rockies and welcome to the Susie Homesteader channel and today we're going to talk about crafting and we're going to talk ha talk about how to set up your craft room which is obviously the most important part of getting started so um, there's two ways you can go on your craft room area and one is starting with a very small room which is what I'm going to explain to you how to do in a 10 by 10 100 square foot area but ideally if you had like more than 200 square feet or some kind of attic or studio that you could set up in uh, that would give you a lot more room to work and you'd be able to get a lot more little crafters in there uh, but you're also going to determine your crafting area based on what kind of crafts you're going to do now in my case i am doing a lot of crafts because we're also incorporating that into our um, oat art program that has to do with my homeschooling so we have to have lots of different crafts uh, and lots of different projects in a very small area so this is where it gets a little tricky because we're not just picking one thing like sewing or quilting or one specific craft we're doing lots of crafts in a very small room so i'm going to show you a couple little tricks uh, to the trade here in terms of getting organized and your first uh, purchase or find that you're going to start looking for is going to be your larger furniture so most of the stuff that I bought that I'm going to show you I probably got at a thrift store or a garage sale or I had it in storage or something like that so uh, putting my craft room together actually did not cost me a dime because I was able to resurrect all kinds of stuff that I had uh, but one of my most important pieces that I found that I think is a great idea is my good old bunk bed and this was one of the kids bunk beds it was probably green or something at some point but obviously it got repainted and it also got raised up about a foot and a half uh, from the bottom legs so uh, all that enabled me to do was to be able to add a desk underneath it which is the goal here so by putting a bunk bed in this little tiny room uh, it gave me a great little uh, work nook with a desk and a place to put all of my smaller crafting supplies underneath it and since you're only going to be sitting in a chair you don't really have to worry about how high up this is uh, this did turn out to be about five feet from the ground up to the top of this bed here but because I raised it about a foot and a half higher which I'll show you in another video how to change your bunk bed around uh, and then that also gave me about two feet on the top from the mattress to the ceiling so in my case I did have to use this uh, top bunk bed as a guest bed because I haven't completed my guest room yet uh, but if you can uh, don't put any mattresses up here just store more goodies up there so if you had some big Rubbermaid boxes with uh, fabric or something that you'd have a hard time storing in a smaller place and it wasn't too heavy this would be a great place to store some of your bigger lightweight boxes so at some point when I get my guest room done this will actually become more storage so great way to um, get started is if you have an old bunk bed laying around and you think you can kind of reformat that into a workspace underneath and either a guest bed or a possible storage storage area on the top so there's one idea for you uh, for some of your smaller crafting supplies and also creating uh, a workstation for at least one person to work under. And uh, I will have a complete list of supplies and materials for you and what you're gonna need for your craft room on my website, Susie Homesteader of the Rockies. And it will include everything from small crafting to supplies all the way up to some great ideas for furniture. Uh, and pieces that you can use for organizing in your craft room as well. Anytime you see any box, any container, any anything that you can put stuff in, just go ahead and grab it. Um, and then while we're on this wall here, we'll talk about how you can kind of make it around a window if you do have a window in your room. Uh, again, if you can't go out, just go up. So same idea with the bunk beds. Just get some shelving in over your windows. Uh, I just hung up a little curtain rod on the shelving brackets 
so that I could put up some some clip hangers and this is one of my favorite ways to put up uh, like materials that I'm using on a current project or anything you can clip paper fabric you name it anything you can hang up there um, on a project that you're working on at the time so it's all available and it's all visible to you so every time I have a holiday I may have all kinds of things hanging up there that would pertain to that holiday or to that craft so again you can still hang stuff over a window too um, and utilize that whole window area which most likely you'll have in your room as well and then you can store more stuff up on the shelves you can store stuff under the window uh, this is actually a hamper uh, that I have some sewing supplies in and then when I don't have this box on here it's also another workstation uh, with a chair uh, for another little crafter to work on and this is one that I use a lot for my sewing and my sewing machine so under the window we have another workstation so we're not losing any space and then I also like to kind of put everything I can on wheels and that's just because if you do run out of space in a small room like this and you have to move things out of this room itself uh, it has wheels on it and you're good to go so I also built this was an old kids table that I built a long time ago just a real small height uh, for the kids to keep their toys in but obviously that got replaced with um, fabric but again built some boxes put some wheels on them and uh, now I have a place to store fabric and scraps and all kinds of stuff so there's another idea for you just boxes with wheels if you can do it and then I had this cabinet uh, just this whole metal cabinet that I put on top of it and it's as high as it can go it's just hitting that eight foot ceiling uh, and something like this of course I have screwed into the wall just for safety reasons in case you know obviously you're gonna have kids crafting with you uh, you don't anytime you're gonna go up high like this you're gonna have some safety concerns so if you do start going this high uh, make sure that some of this stuff is secured to the studs in the wall so here's that idea again I just kept going up took an old dresser that I had and put a cabinet on top of that dresser so we're still moving on up and again making sure it's all secured to the walls so nobody can pull anything down uh, this was just a cabinet that I found at a thrift store and that's now our painting supplies uh, I also took the glass on here and put some dry erase paper or contact paper as you can see uh, on the front of that glass and now we can start labeling everything in our craft room as well so um, I did that on even these Tupperware boxes uh, dry erase contact paper is kind of your best friend you can put it on anything you can write on it you can wipe it off you can change what's in there a uh, great way for people to or kids anybody to find things without having to go through every single cabinet so there's some more dry erase contact paper I even put it on the glass on this cabinet up here uh, mostly just because I wanted to hide what was inside there uh, and if you didn't want to use a dry erase contact paper you could also use a chalkboard contact paper which I'll show you on another cabinet in a minute but fun way to kind of hide things or you know be able to label stuff that you have in your craft room as well so uh, and like in this case this is just some uh, towel sacks uh, kitchen towel sacks that I stuck on some clips and that allowed me with a little tiny you know extension rod but that allowed me to hide whatever I had behind this door so um, as much as I love all my little goodies and crafting supplies and everything um, there is a lot in here so sometimes you just kind of want to hide some of it just so it's not so overwhelming uh, so lots of ways to kind of just uh, add a little uh, design to your craft room as well and maybe hide some of the things that you don't want to look at every day uh, but drawers are nice to have cabinet doors are nice to have boxes are a great one like I said with wheels any kind of little container you can get to fill in a gap in your craft room is what you're gonna need because you're only gonna keep adding and adding and adding to your supplies <laughs> So you definitely want to leave some places open for future supplies. Um, I put lots of little knickknacks in my drawers. Uh, just And then again, you're going to try and leave some areas available for future supplies. 
So don't fill up everything you have because you're going to have to um, bring in more stuff down the line. Uh, this was a changing table that I built a way long time ago. Uh, that again, I had just enough room. Actually, it sat on top of this dresser, but it's an old changing table, baby changing table uh, base that is now holding like uh, wrapping paper or any kind of a roll, that long roll that I could store up there. So it just keeps going on and on. I really didn't miss a spot in this room because I had so much stuff to store. So lots of ideas for you to um, think about when you're at garage sales and thrift st uh, stores. Uh, this was a shelf that I built a while back. Uh, it was originally, uh, I think I had cosmetics on it or something. But anyway, now it's movies and uh, other things that we use just for the holidays and crafting. So another key item, you always want to get clothespins. Uh, I love clothespins. I use them on everything. Uh, even just little, you can find these little laundry uh, holders, you know, I think this was at a thrift store, but you know, those are just great places to hang up your little project list, you know, you name it, uh, fabric, whatever you can think of putting on a clip. But for some reason I use these clothespins and these little clip hangers for tons of stuff. So always keep your clothespins for things. Uh, I have, uh, I have this giant table right here, which I actually, I think I bought this at Joann's and this is a great piece to have because it has, well, let's see, no, it doesn't have wheels. I put wheels on it. Uh, and I originally had this as a makeup table, but, um, it's perfect for crafting. And I think when you find it at Joann's, they probably sell it as kind of like a sewing table maybe. Um, and it, I have to say it's not the best construction design on this. I had to kind of re rebuild this a little bit just to keep it um, from falling apart. Uh, but it, it is a super versatile table. You know, we, we're using it as a painting supply area. Great place. Another great place for kids to work or anybody to craft. So now I have three areas uh, for crafting in this little tiny room and lots of supplies. So you can either leave this up or you can keep it down. Um, I do put a piece of like shower fiberglass on top of this when the kids are actually working on this surface uh, just so that the surface doesn't get destroyed because this is just kind of like a melamine. Uh, and I like putting something on top of this, which could also be a paper, you know, and this is just a, a roll of paper that I actually got at uh, the newspaper, uh, the place in town that does the newspapers. Uh, you know, or produces the newspapers, but this is just the paper rolls that they will sell you when um, they have some left over when they're not using them to uh, put in the printer. So this is, this paper is great because if you can just stick it up high somehow, like on a dowel and then just pull it down, you can cover your tables with it. Um, you know, the kids can use it for painting or finger paints or any other kind of project uh, that you need paper for that's, uh, you know, that you can throw out or that you can burn. So real key thing, have a roll of paper if you can, um, as well as a little area with, like I said, maybe a piece of shower fiberglass on it, uh, especially if they're using hot glue and stuff and you don't want that glue sticking to the paper. So lots of the, and then paper towels, you know, you're always going to want paper towels <laughs> because things get kind of messy. So, um, you know, keep all those on hand in your craft room so that you don't have to run out to the kitchen to clean up, uh, but again, all I did was add more shelving. It went up as high as I could over a closet area. Uh, I had to actually take off my closet doors. Unfortunately, I had some beautiful closet doors on here that I built. Uh, but I had to take them out because this table was off by like an inch with the doors. Uh, so what I did was get a beautiful chenille bedspread. And there's some clips, kind of just like these, uh, that I just used to hang it up on the top track of the original closet. Doors. Uh, so a super easy way to replace your doors. Just go get a bedspread and some of these clips and like a little S hook, uh, kind of a setup so that you can hang, uh, any kind of fabric that you want, um, for hiding, hiding anything. But this was an old closet, uh, that I had to actually store a bunch of other odds and ends in. Uh, but you can get tons of stuff in your closet too. So it goes all the way up to the ceiling. Uh, keep your curtain rods because you may be hanging linens in there, which is the bulk of what I have in here. I have lots of linens and tablecloths. 
uh, well, I got Halloween costumes and all kinds of stuff, but, um, you know, don't get rid of the curtain rod because there's lots of things that you can hang. I'm sorry, I mean the clothing rod because there's lots of things that you can actually hang uh, that has to do with crafting as opposed to putting in a box or uh, into a drawer cabinet. So you're going to want to find every possible little Tupperware box you can find. Uh, these kind of little organizers that you'll get at like a uh, office supply. Uh, gotta have these. You can put everything, all your little knickknacks A to Z in those drawers. Um, you can stack them. You can go all the way up to the ceiling depending on how you have your closet organized. Uh, if you don't have a closet, um, you know, you can stack those anywhere. But it is kind of nice having a closet, which most rooms do have. Uh, and keep, again, keep the rod and keep the shelves because, you know, it just keeps going on and on. So anyway, there's a couple ideas for your closet area. And uh, we'll go just kind of over to this other wall here, which I'll show you a, uh, just a kid's cabinet, which is another kind of key thing you're going to want to have in a craft room. So one of my best ideas was designating a cabinet just for the kids. Uh, and that creates uh, a lot less chaos <laughs> in the craft room. So if you don't want little people uh, rifling through all your stuff and having to clean all that up, it's really nice to have just a cabinet that they have their stuff in and that they can get into anytime they want. Uh, so, you know, a cabinet or a drawer or any kind of little designated area, uh, even possibly labeled, you know, if they're of reading age, for them to get anything they want to get out of here and not necessarily have to be supervised or, uh, you know, have an adult help them with. So this was a great idea because this allows my kids to just go in there and grab whatever they want. So here's another example of uh, labeling things. So this was... This was actually glass. This whole piece was originally glass like this, but of course the glass broke. And so all I did was take again some of that shower fiberglass, which for some reason I seem to use quite a bit of. Um, but this is just like shower wall fiberglass that you can get anywhere. Uh, but this is what I was talking about in terms of uh, having a kind of a mat, you know, or a surface for the kids to work on that you're not worried about. So as you can see, this is full of hot glue and paint and we don't care because we're just going to throw that out when it gets too, uh, too nasty. But what I did do with this fiberglass was because the glass was broken on this or because I also didn't want to have glass this far down with the kids, I took some of the shower fiberglass and replaced it in the slot and also put on some chalkboard contact paper. Uh, and then again, if you didn't want to label it, the kids could even write on it themselves if they wanted to. So a couple of little ideas for, uh, you know, getting your kids involved with your craft room and having a real specific place for them. And that helps out a lot, especially on the cleaning. And then again, I just had an old cabinet that went to my other dresser, stored more stuff in here. It went up as high as I could. Uh, you know, everything we can possibly use that fits in this room is stored somewhere in some form of a cabinet or a box. Um, and then of course, if you get to the point where uh, this room just isn't big enough for you. You know, you may be moving a lot of your craft projects out to even a wood shop or something else that you have that would um, enable, to you, enable you to have a larger workspace. So lots to think about, um, but I had, like I said, 100 square feet and I used every inch of it. And then the more movable, the more portable, and the more changeable you can make everything in this room, uh, the easier it will be for you. Because again, if you can't get everything done in this room, at least you could take it out to like a dining room table or, you know, a bigger shop area that you might have available. Um, so if I can do this in a little 10 by 10 room, I'm pretty sure you can set up your craft room anywhere you want. Um, and... <clears throat> your budget is always a large part of this it will take you forever to kind of gather all your supplies and your materials because uh, crafting stuff is kind of like that it's like you know building up your kitchen supplies there's endless endless things that you can continue to buy uh, so leave yourself extra space for things to come and it will take you a while so don't get upset if you don't have all your crafting materials at once but it'll take you a good year or so to build up all your supplies and your materials so um, again, this was like one of my funnest projects because it was something that was really, really needed. 
and it's a little room but we have everything we need in here uh, and I'm sure I can fit some more in here too. So if you have any questions, come and see me at Suzy Homestead of the Rockies and I'll answer your questions for you and I'll have lots of lists uh, for supplies and furniture and things that you can uh, use to build your craft room and a shopping link for lots of stuff uh, to stock up on. So we'll see you there. Bye bye. to the Susie Homestead channel and we'll see you there. Bye-bye.